A video was sent to me by an individual claiming that this uh, one. A video was sent to me about this uh, Norwegian uh, communist organization who seems to be Gonzaloist, essentially claiming that third worldism is false for uh, tw twenty eight twenty nine reasons. And this was not directed at me, but rather at the LLCO. But since it is making a terrible argument against third worldism, I th I'm going to go ahead and and actually r respond to it. Um, some of this is it's just frankly ridiculous, and it shows the the I the current ideological weakness in most of the uh, uh, Marxist uh, movement right now, particularly uh, with regards to the anti third worldist. Uh, I'm going to skip the foreword. I'm going to skip the introduction because it doesn't make any argument. Lin Biao and revisionism. Lin Biao was bad, therefore third worldism is bad. I mean, this this is a complete non sequitur. Like this this doesn't make any sense. Lin Biao wasn't a third worldist. Third worldism did not exist. There's literally no argument here. It doesn't make any sense. Class struggle to s struggle between countries. Today's third world means full support to Hugo Chavez and the Bolivarian government. Actually, it doesn't say that whatsoever. That's an outright lie. The LLCO does not give uncritical support to Hugo Chavez or the, or the Bolivarian government, and neither do I. In fact, I've criticized Venezuela many times. This is, in, in fact, the LLCO has criticized them many times. This is an outright lie. You know, this is this is a straw man argument. At no point do we give, an, an, you know, any non-critical support to them. So they're they're just pulling this out of their ass. Is there basis for revolutionary struggle in the first world? We would write that there is no significant basis, not enough to launch a revolution. We don't say that there's none. I mean, this one. In this section, they just go over like how bad the third world is, and that be how bad the first world is, and how it's getting worse. Okay, but none of that actually takes on the argument made by third worldism, and that being a degree of revolutionary potential. It just says that we claim that there is no revolutionary potential. Well, we don't. Again, this is another straw man argument misrepresenting what we say. Third worldism and revisionism. Uh, this is a rehash of essentially the past two arguments that were made. Third worldism is mechanical. Uh, uh, the LLCO writes this uh, text accusing others of being metaphysical is simply not true, but gives essentially not really any argument. It just says, oh, well, third worldism is metaphysical because the first world sucks to live in, etc. And we've never said that it didn't suck. We've never said that there was no suffering in the first world. I again, this is another lie about the position that we hold. Third world only sees one contradiction. This is absolutely false. We don't see only one contradiction. We just see a difference in the primary contradiction. That would be imperialism. If these Gonzaloists are running around pretending to be Maoists, then they would know that imperialism is the primary contradiction. They may not see that contradiction the same way we do, but they do are supposed to understand that imperialism is the primary contradiction. We just see that as one that's different than theirs. We don't only see one. There's absolutely no evidence for the basis that we see there only being one. Again, this is an outright lie. We're only saying that imperialism and this particular view of imperialism is the primary contradiction. Third worldism is economism. The LLCO literally already wrote like more than one blog post on that and why it's not true. Uh, in fact, uh, this doesn't even address the argument. Like it's, it, it says, okay, there's a wealth difference between the first and third world. Yeah, but uh, ex exploitation still happens in the first world. Okay, yeah, w we acknowledge that. We don't deny that that, that happens. And this thing goes into uh, France in the 1850s, India in the 1850s. So what? I mean, it's, it's conflating colonialism. We don't say that colonialism is the same. Essentially, what they're saying here is that colonialism is the same as imperialism. Just because there's a divide there, that means it's the same thing. N no, imperialism is not the same thing as colonialism. That's the assumption they're making. They're not explicitly saying it, but that's the assumption in what they're saying. Yes, imperialism is actually quite different. It plunders 
the third world differently. Uh, for example, there was no third world in the 1850s. There was colonialism and that wealth divide between the poor countries and the rich countries, that going from, what is it, 12 to 1 to 72 to 1, which was not our numbers, but in fact come up with the Organization for the Economic Development, etc. So again, this doesn't address their, our argument. It essentially avoids our argument by simply saying, yeah, well, there's always been a rich and poor country, so therefore you're wrong. And what we're saying that that's qualitatively changed. There's been a quanti there's been a there's been a quantitative change over the centuries, and then that has come into a qualitative change. This is a part of dialectics which we've expressed that they don't address. The world is not a chessboard. Actually, yes, it is. There is a such thing as geopolitics. In fact, there's a great deal of Marxist Leninists and in fact non Marxists and Maoists who acknowledge that geopolitics in fact does exist. So this uh, it doesn't even make any this criticism doesn't make any sense. Uh, third world has an un Marxist class analysis. This is another rehash of a previous argument saying that there's exploitation in the first world, so therefore you're wrong. They just rephrase the same thing differently. Capitalist economy is a relation between people, not between things. Yeah, we know that. We don't say that's not true. This entire paragraph is completely meaningless. It, it, it's not even an argument. It just says, here's this thing of Marxism, how it works but doesn't actually address third world as well as a criticism. It just defines something. Same era as the career revisionist Bernstein. I mean, again, th uh, this one, uh, basically uh, Bernstein made the argument primary and secondary sectors for value creation are the true value creation. Mm, no, uh, that's different from saying what is the true value creation and the actual creation of value. We're saying that most of the value creation has been shipped to the third world. Not that some sectors are the real creation of value. Physical commodity production is value creation. In fact, that's basic labor theory of value, which uh, apparently went out the window when trying to attack third worldism. So again, here they've, they've failed to understand what we're trying to say. Third world, let's twist the facts. Again, this is another rehash of the, yeah, well, it's not it's not super amazing super wealthy first world people so therefore you're wrong again this isn't an argument that we make we don't say that living in the first world is a paradise so again this is another misrepresentation and just a rehash of an argument that they've already made twice before consumption in the west must be significantly reduced but yeah actually it kind of does have to be reduced the united states consumes at what is it, uh, four and a half planet Earths? Like, like, if the entire world were to consume at the same level of the United States, it would take four and a half planets of resources. Then it says, oh, yeah, but basically it's, it's all the rich people who take all of it, which is bullshit. That, that's outright bullshit. The 1% of the, first, of the first world, particularly in the United States in this case, could not consume more than 99%. It's literally not possible. This is this is complete bullshit. Our third world is just lying about the world's poorest. Again, it's this we do not believe that even the poorest Americans have a life of gastronomi uh, gastronomic luxury. Again, they're just saying that, yeah, well, it sucks in the first world, and there's alienation there, and there's exploitation. Yeah, we don't deny it. This is the fourth time that they've used this exact same argument. More un-Marxist, one-sided view of class on what basis it just here's uh the LOCO's view here's our view but no explanation as to why ours is correct and yours is not again this comes down to again this is saying that your class analysis is wrong because it sees us as being beneficiaries of imperialism okay, yeah the first world does benefit from imperialism and thus the working class people do as well this isn't a refutation it just says you're wrong because that's not what Marx said and that's a logical fallacy that's an, 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 an appeal to uh, th I, I think it's authority it doesn't address the argument that third worldism makes and that the world has changed cutting consumption is necessary but not just evil this isn't even an argument at all it doesn't even make any sense third world is equate friend with foe uh, no we don't it doesn't 
Uh, yes, actually, the first world does plunder the third world. Apparently, they don't believe that happens. Uh, the third world is specifically kept underdeveloped to serve the material interests of the first world. Uh, that's not even third third worldist. I mean, that is third worldist theory, but we didn't even come up with that. Like, this doesn't even make any sense. Like, this is, is very similar to what Lenin already said and what other theorists of imperialism, even Thomas Sankara, have said. So this isn't even attacking third worldism. It's, it's, it's oh, this is like holding Germans responsible for Hitler. Actually, that actually is kind of true because a lot of Germans did actively support Hitler in what he was doing just as the vast majority of the American population does actually support the wars and does benefit from the plunder of the third world. So this is actually a, f a false equation. Or, or all Indians are responsible for the state leader Modi. No, but the uh, Hindu nationalists would be. And it's, it's an idiotic argument because India doesn't exploit the third world. India is the third world. This is ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. Like, this is an idiotic comparison. It's just meaningless. Third world is cannot explain popular struggle in the West. Yeah, actually we can. In fact, we have been doing that. That's been one of the main things that even I myself have been doing. Not, not just the LLCO. Yeah, there's social unrest in the first world. And we've explained that popular struggle because there are contradictions in the first world. There is racism, etc., which we have never said don't exist. This idea that throws cannot explain popular struggle in the West is just an outright lie. We explain it all the time. This is just something that they just made up. Revisionism from the third world is, again, uh, the revisionists reduce class to property relations. Now, in certain cases, yeah, that kind of is. That's one of the arguments against third worldism. Yeah, it's about relationship to the means of production, not about uh, who benefits from what. And now they've just turned around and said, well, it's not necessarily uh, the property relations. It's all this other thing, too. So uh, anti-third worldists are just outright contradicting themselves on this. They're having their cake and eating it, too. Uh, I, and again, the rest of this is a rehash of the argument they've now made five times before. There are several layers to the proletariat. Yeah, we don't deny that. We're saying that there are even more layers than you're saying. So we're not saying that there's less layers. We're saying there's even more. And that those relations between the different layers of the proletariat are different from when they were 100 years ago. This doesn't actually do that. This doesn't actually respond to that in any way, shape, or form. It's, it's, it's insane. Lenin against third worldism. Yeah, we don't say that he is for third worldism, as third worldism didn't exist during his time. And even then, Lenin wouldn't have Lenin's anal. They take Lenin's analysis from a hundred years ago under different material conditions and saying, "Oh, it doesn't agree with this." Of course, it wouldn't. It's from a completely different time and in a different set of material conditions. Of course, it doesn't agree. Again, this is another logical fallacy. This is just an appeal to authority. It's ridiculous. Third world has embraced the internal enemy. No. That that doesn't make any sense. Uh, they make states and movements bourgeois. They pave the way for becoming lackeys of imperialists like Cuba and the Soviet Union or themselves like in China and Africa. You know, recognizing these countries' rights to self-determination does not mean, oh yeah, you totally believe that these are socialist states and they're paradises. Uh, this is this doesn't even make any sense what would we do if the third world is right well you've already demonstrated that right now by being incredibly fucking dishonest third world is never useful in practice we haven't had an opportunity to put it into practice yet as opposed to the gonzaloism that you propound which by the way is a complete failure it has failed it hasn't gonzaloism has not produced revolution in any way shape or form in fact most of its contributions have been completely reactionary like attacking the embassy of the dp uh, of the dprk uh slaughtering indigenous groups for disagreeing with the cult of personality around gonzalo etc third world is overestimate empire but underestimate revisionism and there's like not even here it's it's just as 
like it doesn't even say anything it just says you're not this essentially tldr you're not you're not mouse so therefore we don't consider you to be mouse therefore you're wrong i mean this is dumb even though they said oh well you reprinted some movie analysis is from mim yeah there was some of that but the, the llco primarily only writes theory which that theory isn't actually addressed in this blog post Third World of Taylor for Avoiding the Fight, which is complete bullshit. Read the LLCO article on uh, on do nothingism. We're not advocating doing nothing. We're advocating shifting effort and resources to those who are willing to fight. So where's the thing saying that it's avoiding the fight? Like, what are you talking about? We're just saying shifting the resources to people who are willing to fight, whereas First Worldum is do nothingism because it's not participating or actively trying to trying to carry out revolution. In case you, they haven't noticed, there are there are revolutions going on in the third world, but there are none in the advanced countries. There are none in the first world. You might even be able to make the argument to the to the degree in the second world, but not in the first world. So they're outright wrong. They're actually describing themselves. A Maoist answered the problem the third world raised. Uh, essentially, TLDR, uh, third worldism is wrong because it's not what the Maoist line is. It's not what Gonzalo said, and therefore it's wrong because we don't like it. I mean, this attempt at trying to refute third worldism was completely ridiculous. I mean, there was, there was very little effort put in here. This was, at best... At best, it's trying to poke holes in things, uh, making logical fallacies like uh, appeals to authority, and this is not what the textbook says. And we know that's not what the textbook says. We're not making that argument. We're saying that things have changed since when the textbook was written, but they don't address those arguments. All they do is say, yeah, well, it still sucks in the first world for various reasons. You know, we don't deny that. That's not the argument that we're making. Uh, this post was frankly completely ridiculous. Uh, this was it, at best a half-hearted attempt at trying to criticize third worldism. And if in the future they're going to write something like this, then they really should try a lot harder. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.